Hello my friends and welcome back to the Outer Worlds. In our last video, we wrapped up the Peril on Gorgon DLC and just barely began the Murder on Eridanos DLC. And I noticed when editing the last video that we actually have quest updates. So the quest that brought us out here was called No Night Without Stars and the update was that you watch the latest episode of Halstead on Helen versus the Brain Eaters. The serial's cliffhanger ended with a murder, literally. <laughs> it did, didn't it? And then our current quest is called The Last Roll of Halcyon Helen, because Halcyon Helen, beloved, a beloved Aetherwave star and product icon, has been murdered. With the unveiling of Rizzo's Spectrum Brown at risk, you have been hired to find the pernis pernicious killer and bring them to justice. So the first thing we need to do, well, actually the third thing we need to do <laughs> is go to the Grand Colonial Hotel, Sublight Underground, welcome you to the Grand Colonial Hotel, head inside and locate the scene of Helen's murder. Okay, well, we're going to do all that and we're at the port, but let's, uh, again, with the blurry map, what is, what is really, there we go, that's really weird. That seems very buggy. But since we're here, let's let's poke around and see what other stuff we can find. Just Adreno, not Adreno time. Because we took care of that rather thoroughly last time. <laughs> oh, there is a workbench. And nothing can be stolen. Okay, I'm a little surprised at that, but okay. It's like delivery of a pod. Oh, Felix is gonna love this place. I love the multicolored smoke. It's really cool. <laughs> I think I must have had something in my ear. I could have sworn you just said we aren't allowed to depart. Apologies, sir, but the atmospheric complex is on complete lockdown. No one's allowed in or out until the murder investigation's concluded. Do you have any idea who I am? <laughs> I could bury you under six tons of paperwork before you had the time to cry out for your supervisor. I'm sure you could, but we fed our last box of grievance forms into the incinerator a few months ago. Is there anything I can do for you in the meantime? I cannot believe this. You are a hotel guest, sir. I can't believe Helen's gone. We're never going to get a sequel to Terror on Monarch. That's your priority? You're slug operator. I don't much care if you work for the adjutant. You want my respect? You show respect to Mr. Kincannon. I mean, well... <laughs> Again, I'm like, I, didn't I kill the adjutant? I feel like that actually happened. Fast travel location discovered luxury landing pad. Ooh. Sweeper. And that's sealed. How many bits I've spent at the Grand Colonial? Is my patronage worth nothing to you? I'm sure you've spent a lot, sir, but unfortunately we can't make any exceptions can't make any exceptions. In Byzantium, those words would be a criminal offense. <laughs> Shame we're not in Byzantium. And, and anything else? What is, it looks like a little mini spaceship. That's cool. We've seen a few of those. Listen, I understand the lockdown. Really, I do. You've got your job to do, and you'll get fired if you don't do it. Thanks for the understanding. I wasn't finished. Couldn't <laughs> I just go out on a ship for a brief period? A handful of minutes, maybe? Just a quick trip to Byzantium so I can check on my stocks? I promise it won't take more than an hour. Sir, for both our sakes, I'm just going to pretend like you didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> These two are great. Oh, what a great way to start. Although I think the best way to start was when I was hired by three people, apparently, but they were all fighting over who was going to, like, talk to me about it. It was, it was kind of hilarious. But anyway, so there's a welcome over here. What's all this stuff that's just asking to be picked up? Elevator down. How many levels? Hmm. Let's not go that way just yet. Ooh. 
There are genuine tears on it right now. Genuine. <laughs> I've been here so long, it is affecting my psyche. I just want to leave. I'm very sorry to hear that, sir. If you go up to your room, you'll be able to request a visit from a counseling mechanical. <laughs> Oh, I love this lady. She's got an answer for everything. It's kind of swanky. Greetings, Inspector. No need to check in here. Your paperwork has all been processed. You should be able to find the Colonial right ahead. Okay, can we still talk, though? Are you enjoying the amenities? I don't know yet. I hope you catch the killer soon, Inspector. I don't want to see the Grand Colonial shut down. Okay. Then we have a janitor. Oh. It's like Sam. Sublight Underground appreciates your patronage. The hat, though. I mean, the hat. And, like, the whole outfit, to be honest. <laughs> oh, oh, what's this? Can I look at this? The Dissident Queen at Chapter 1. Halcyon Helen battles a lingering foe in a seedy bar. Halcyon Helen and Typhon Tim spoke in a quiet, in quiet tones about their next course of action. Their voices soft beneath the din of the bar. The duo had just finished the last of the paperwork on Helen's latest jobs. Filing precise reports always raised her spirits. The trails led us here, and I suspect it will lead us no farther. Soon we will find the source of the dissident's monster, said Helen, a charismatic grin on her face. Or characteristic grin, rather, on her face. Let's hope your hunch is correct, Tim murmured, for I suspect their agents will not be far behind us. As if brought on by Tim's supposition, a frightful voice suddenly thundered throughout the room. Near the door loomed a giant and blood-stained man, looking for all his worth like he had fought his way through a manticween's den. It was Maximilian Mercer, well-feared dissident stooge, and he held two Spacer's Choice light pistols in his greasy hands. Surprise, they're gonna pitch a competitive brand. Cause they're all Rizzo. What's this, Skip, can I, oh, I can't take your stuff? Oh well, it's fine. Can I, can I take this stuff? Apparently, I can steal from other people, just not her. Okay, so we... I'm surprised there's not, like, a better map to zoom in on. Fancy place. I hope they're not expecting us to pay. Right? I, I, I don't know if I could afford it. Add drone. This is really nice. Hello. Bertie Holcomb is likely beside himself in grief. I see the adjutant sent her own freelancer to mourn Helen's death. I don't think the game has picked up that I killed her. Rizzo's mock apple cider. A hard cider for a hard life. <laughs> I see the adjutant sent her own freelancer to mourn Helen's death. He's talking, but no words are coming out. So horrible, I can't believe someone so famous as Halcyon Helen could meet a fate like this. It's a really a terrible shame. I absolutely adored her serials. Who is talking? I almost can't imagine such a thing. You don't think a dissident could be here, do you? Get a hold of yourself. The administrator would never allow someone as dangerous as a dissident here. Eridanos is safe. This is all just a terrible coincidence. Of course, of course, you are absolutely right. I think the idea of a psychopath wandering among us is just making me nervous. Uh, yeah, that would make anybody nervous who was, you know, sane. I want it to be like an army of dissidents or something. It's probably not. I'm just taking in the view. It's really pretty. And I bet you believed Halcyon Helen's death was the worst part of all this. What? You don't mean to tell me that it isn't. There's something even worse? There is. I spent 6,000 bits on a new suit for the unveiling. But now that it's been postponed, 
I'll never get a chance to show it off. My love, that is a real tragedy. Wow, you people are horrible. Like, I, okay, that happened. Again, just enjoying the view and also giving these two over here a moment to gather their thoughts so they could talk some more to us. So when the Rizzo spokesman said that the unveiling would be indefinitely postponed, <laughs> what did he mean? Are we going to have to wait an entire week? Two weeks? I suspect it may take longer than that. If the murder isn't solved, the unveiling could be postponed for as long as a month. I can't believe that! We should sue. <laughs> we can <laughs> sue later. For now, let's just enjoy the day and hope the murder is solved with due haste. We should sue them. <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's go in. I feel like we've wasted enough time. Ooh, the board report. Halcyon Helen dead. I've entered the Grand Colonial Hotel. What do I need to do next? Speak to the constable. Well, let's save after all that. I wish I'd worn my muddy boots and the jacket with holes in it. Can you imagine the looks we'd get? <laughs> yeah, I'm in, I look pretty snazzy. I'm in a Jolicoeur. Granted, I have a moon mask on, but still. The murder has inflicted severe emotional trauma on me. I demand a room upgrade. <laughs> I mean, do people actually think that works? I love the elevator music in the background. Oh, come on. Why is the lounge closed? I wanted brunch. I don't know. My game is a little laggy again. I'm not sure if it'll come through, but it's... I'll bet you 10 bits this is all just some sort of publicity stunt. It's frustrating. Can I talk to any of these people? How about this guy? He's got a unique name. Concierge Halston. I'm sorry, ma'am, but while the hotel is an active crime scene, I regret to inform you that all new bookings, room upgrades, room downgrades, and in-room massages are suspe- Oh, you're the special inspector. Mr. Yeah. Kincannon warned me you'd be checking in soon. Hmm, right? You you happen to have my room key? I need to find Constable Keem who? <laughs> I don't need any help from the front desk right now. Now let's go with who, because that sounds sarcastic. Why you? No, not the special inspector. I meant your boss. Oh, Mr. Kincannon. He runs all sublet underground operations in the Eridanus Atmospheric Complex, including the Grand Colonial Hotel. But he keeps his office down in the warehouse district, near the docks. If you should require to meet with him in person, you're most likely to find him there. While you're here, Inspector, could I set you up with a room? Obviously. Uh, sure, what do you have? For you? Only the best, ma'am, of course. You'll be staying in our luxurious penthouse suite, vacated just recently. Um. So recently that, unfortunately, the room's still being cleaned. I'm sure it'll be ready for you by the time you've examined the crime scene. I believe Constable Keen should be waiting for you in the Grand Ballroom. Is it available recently because it was Halcyon Helen's room, perhaps? But I didn't see the Grand Ballroom on my way in. Oh, the ballroom's right behind the tower elevators. Swing a left or a right, then cut through the crowd of spectators. You can't miss it. Okay. Bye. I was nearly attacked by a terror ray on my way here. You were? How was that even, like, a thing? Okay. Um, alright, let's, let me, let me get to where I need to go, and then we'll spend, no doubt. Welcome to the Grand Colonial. Please make yourself at home. Way too long exploring. <laughs> Black Hole Bertie's disappeared, you know. The poor fellow must be inconsolable. Or he's guilty. I mean, kind of looks that way. This is pretty fancy. Oh, thank the law. Inspector, you don't know how relieved I am to see you. Let's skip the pleasantries. I'm ready to begin my investigation. Constable Keen, nice to meet you. We spoke on the Aether Wave. I was actually looking for the bar. Do they serve drinks with little umbrellas here? Oh, we're going with it. Our dossier mentioned you had problems committing to a job. <laughs> In accordance with Rizzo's company policy, I am required to give you this motivational message. <laughs> I believe you will find that assisting your local Rizzo's security department is 
even more thrilling than the sweet, smooth flavor of Rizzo's Spectrum Vodka. Dr. Goodnight, ecstatic to make your various acquaintances and so on? Are we finished with the pleasantries? There's something I'm excited to show you. Oh, I'm guessing you're talking about the body. What have you got for me, doctor? Is it directions to the spa? <laughs> Are you talking about that program? What was it called? Perspiring your way to productivity? <laughs> no, what I have is much more invigorating. Our coroner has developed a device which may prove useful in your investigation. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Oh, please. You make it sound as if I'm turning over stolen goods. Behold, my discrepancy amplifier. Hold it in your hands. Feel the way it hums with ontological potential. Uh, a say clues are nearby. Equip the discrepancy am amplifier. Oh, okay. What does this thing do exactly? This looks like a scope modified with a computing device. Interesting, I'm guessing this device makes use of a deterministic calculus. Nice, how do I set it to kill? <laughs> okay, let's let's hold on our sarcasm just a bit, but let's. Wh what does this thing do? I'm so glad you asked. Allow me to explain. The discrepancy amplifier uses a deterministic model of our universe to detect the discrepancy between what should be and what actually is. Okay. Then it renders any discrepancies visible by using the power of magnification. So outer world's magic, basically. So sounds like something the OCI teaches. So it's a mag. <laughs> yeah, it's a magnifying glass. It's yes. It's a magnifying glass, but an extraordinarily <laughs> powerful one. It looks through the glass of reality itself. I'm contractually prohibited from endorsing off-brand technology, but I'll bend that rule just this once. You'll want to peer into the amplifier and examine the crime scene. Okay, so the discrepancy amplifier. Greetings, Inspector. Thanks to the half-genius, half-mad scientific mind of Dr. Goodnight, you've been granted the discrepancy amplifier. Can we have a moment where Dr. Goodnight sounds like it's some character out of a Bond movie? It's, it's amazing and I love it. <laughs> a handy investigation device for uncovering clues throughout Eridanos. Be sure to equip the discrepancy amplifier in a weapon slot before you continue your hunt for Helen's killer. Okay, well, um, let's put it here. I haven't, I don't really use agony. There we go. Scanning Eridanos for evidence. To catch Helen's killer, you need to use the discrepancy amplifier scope to reveal clues not visible to the naked eye. Once you've located some evidence, aim directly at it while zooming in with the scope and press the interact button to analyze it. This thing is kind of... It, it, I don't. Mm. You're uh, really digging around Helen's body for clues, huh? Obviously. Like, come on. The discrepancy amplifier is now operational. Greetings, designated inspector and or unauthorized larcenist. <laughs> this unit has detected a discrepancy related to Halcyon Helen. Unscheduled expiration of. Begin amplification. Unscheduled expiration of that's 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 a way to put it that somebody died. So sure, let's get started. You can talk smack and run a little. You'll speak what spoke would do. I see you've been designed with a modular analytical system. What else can you do? The discrepancy amplifier has been programmed with advanced speech recognition, scientific analysis, and deterministic calculus protocols. Oh, you'll love this amplifier. Tell the inspector about your features. Please do not interrupt the discrepancy <laughs> amplifier. The discrepancy amplifier is programmed to take instruction from its registered or designated inspector. How curious. I must have set its impertinence levels to flagrant. This unit's features include an automated personality simulator. This unit has been programmed to simulate joy and satisfaction in assisting you. It's like having a little Ada with me with all the sarcasm that she has with her. It's great. So let's get started. Tell me about the discrepancy you found. This is a bottle of unreleased Rizzo's product. Helen appears to have attempted to use it to spell something as she expired, but all she managed was a sticky B. Hmm. Was she trying to spell the name of her killer? What's the unreleased Rizzo product? Let's try the first one. This hypothesis is plausible, but requires additional information. 
A B can stand for anything like Spectrum Brown. Isn't Black Hole Birdie staying here? Hmm. Let's go with the second one. I was wondering about that. Before we arrived, I heard something on the Aether Waves about Black Hole Birdie taken up at the Grand Colonial. Correct. Bertie Blackhole Holcomb is a registered guest at the Grand Colonial Hotel. Oh, I should bring Parvati with me. She's Holcomb. So when we go and find Black Hole, Black Hole Holcomb, I need to make sure I have Parvati with me, just in case they're like randomly, distantly related or something. Uh, anything else I should know about? Accessing guest database B. The Grand Colonial Hotel is proud to serve the following VIPs. Bertie, comma, Black Hole. Burbage 3001. The robot? Make note of that for later, Amplifier. This evidence has been recorded for later reference. Now generating pre-approved compliment. Splendid work, Inspector. <laughs> Thanks. What's all the... Oh. This footprint stands out from the normally spotless floor of the Grand Ballroom. Typically, the ballroom is cleaned twice daily, which means this must have been made by either Helen or her assailant or assailants. Discrepancy amplifier. Do the size of these footprints match anything you have on record? Taste the dirt? No thanks. Footprint is a tailor-made 8.75, suggesting that its owner was very particular about their shoe size. It is also the exact size that Halcyon Helen typically prefers. There are traces of dirt throughout the footprint. So these are... Her shoes? I'm seeing some purple berry in this dirt. Amplifier analysis. Amplifier, can you analyze the dirt? The dirt carries traces of fertilizer, as well as the faint signs of crushed purple berries and grass. Grass, fertilizer, and purple berries can all be found in the purple berry orchards, located not far from the Grand Colonial. Huh. So Helen must have been in the orchard before she died, but the footprints are going away from the body? I... It doesn't actually make sense. This deduction appears sound. Good work, Inspector. I had a feeling we'd make some progress once we brought you onto the case. You'll need Administrator Ludovico to grant you access to the orchards. Contact him through the secure access terminal in your penthouse suite. Check in with the concierge. Your room should be ready by now. If it isn't, I may have to go shake someone by the collar. <laughs> Oh, no, it's not walking away. It is walking towards the body. Okay. Can I talk to you guys? Let's put away the gun. Well, the analysis. Something I should know? Maybe. I don't know. I'd like to ask you some questions, Constable. Are you asking me these questions in an official capacity? Uh, yep. Got my inspector head on. I understand you're being metaphorical, but I'm <laughs> contractually obligated to remind you that Rizzo's cannot provide you with any official brand-associated headgear. Please, ask your questions. Well, why not? I, I like my hats. I think they're fun, even though I'm going to still wear my moon mask. But anyway, who found the body? Norval, head bellhop. He was understandably distraught. I believe his feelings were genuine. He's a remarkably poor actor. <laughs> Hotel security corroborates his whereabouts during the murder. I haven't included him in my list of suspects, but neither am I convinced of his innocence. Oh, wh why, would, why would you say that? I'm a little suspicious of anyone who enjoys his job as much as Norval. <laughs> He's also obsessive in his appreciation of Helen's work. Obsessive passion can lead to irrational behavior. It's a fact of modern science. Any witnesses to the murder? I would guess not, right? If there were any witnesses, none came forward. Ballroom cameras were also offline at the time of the murder. Hmm. Helen was very particular about having cameras on her. Security footage would have constituted documentary filmmaking. Can't afford that. Oh, I see. So she had all the cameras turned off wherever she went. So no witnesses. What about a murder weapon? There's no sign of the murder weapon. Whatever it was that killed Helen, the killer took it with them. Frankly, I'm having trouble imagining exactly what it was that killed her. Any signs of struggle? Was Helen armed? Helen was known to carry her signature weapon, a bespoke handgun known as the Needler. There was no sign of any such weapon on her body. The Needler's real? 
I watched her use that thing in the gunfight at the end of Terror on Monarch. <laughs> you keep excitable company. <laughs> I hope they won't complicate your investigation by touching things. Oh. <laughs> no promises. Felix extremely excited. Do you have any suspects? Spencer Woolrich and Bertie Holcomb are officially persons of interest in this investigation. I've mostly ruled out Mr. Woolrich, leaving Bertie Holcomb as my lead suspect. Let me rephrase that. He's your lead suspect. Mm -mm. I've been instructed to turn this case over to your capable hands while I continue to serve as a consultant. Okay, so what makes them suspects? You, so you sound a little relieved. Your lead suspects are a to star tossball player and an actor. She does sound relieved though, doesn't she? Work is simple. People are complicated. They are. The people involved in this murder are especially complicated. Yeah. Mr. Woolrich was Halcyon Helen's professional rival. It's possible jealousy drove him to take Helen out of the picture. I apologize for the wordplay. <laughs> Conversely, Mr. Bertie Holcomb was Helen's paramour. The relationship was reportedly dissolved. I can't rule out her murder as a crime of passion. Hmm, you don't seem too sure about Spencer Woolrich. Bertie and Helen were dating, but that doesn't make him a suspect. So let's go with the first one. Woolrich thinks of himself as a serious and distinguished actor. He was frequently cast in demeaning roles, while Helen played the charismatic heroine. He has reason to be envious. I considered the possibility that Woolrich killed Helen in order to eliminate a rival and advance his own career. But my reasoning collapsed under closer scrutiny. Woolrich owes his career to Helen's dramas. Her death likely harms his long-term prospects. I'm struggling to determine a motivation for him, so I've largely ruled him out. Okay, but then what makes you suspect Birdie? Lover spurned or something like that? Mr. Holcomb was in a romantic relationship with Helen. This alone is not enough to make him a lead suspect, but he does play tossball. Black Hole Birdie currently holds the record for most non-consecutive blows to the head. <laughs> His tendency toward irrational and violent behavior is well documented. I'd like to talk about something else. Please, ask your questions. And apparently that's it for Anything now. Anything else? Questions? If we're going to be working together, I'd like to get to know you better. I'm afraid I must decline. Oh. It isn't personal, Inspector. I'm just on duty right now. Talk to me later, after you've met with Administrator Ludovico. I'll make time to chat. Okay. Bye. She doesn't want to talk to me right now. Oh, let's not walk over Helen. I feel like that's bad luck or something. Hello, Dr. Goodnight. The purple berry orchards. And a footprint. Inspector, that was absolutely marvelous. Thanks. Beautifully deduced. With the help of my discrepancy amplifier, of course. Uh, I I'd like a word with you? Ah, I was waiting for this. Yes, of course. I'm only too eager to cooperate. Well, tell me about the body. What's the cause of death? We haven't been introduced yet. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Doctor. I don't really know what I'm doing here. I might not be the right person for the job. Um, well, let's, let's be polite and introduce ourselves. My goodness. I must have died and ascended to the architect's plane. I never imagined I'd meet someone courteous and well-mannered in this hotel. I'd be more than happy to banter with you after I finish my autopsy. Until then, shall we talk about the body? I'm aware I'm all over the place with my sarcasm and then chatting people up, but it, it could work out well in the end. But anyway, uh, sure, what have you got for me? Our leading lady must have riled up someone. Her wounds from cranium to metatarsal are as follows. A blow to the head, severe enough to lacerate the flesh. Ugh. Followed by a suite of plasma burns down the neck and back, signs of poisoning, evidence of inanition and desiccation, possible signs of jaundice, some shingles, one malformed toenail. Ew. Uh, I think you may have lost me. Could you narrow the list down? Yeah, it seems like somebody doesn't know the definition of excessive. And then let's stick to the most likely cause of death. Yeah, let's go with that one. That's good advice. I'll just strike out malformed toenail as a possible cause of death. Yeah. The short version is this. Helen was killed by poison, a blow to the head, and a plasma weapon. Possibly more. Possibly more. Uh, I'll bear that in mind. There was one other thing, though. I am, of course, at your service. I'd like to know a little bit more about you about this discrepancy amplifier of dot dot dot. Oh, good. One of my favorite subjects. Ask away, my dear. 
Ask away. What made you invent the amplifier? Hmm. I didn't expect an existentialist question so early today. <laughs> it's a need. Just as sprats feel they must breed, or canids feel they must brutally maul each other, I feel the need to create. Hmm. What medical purpose does the amplifier serve seems like it's not related to your job. It doesn't seem related to her job. The amplifier's design is oddly bulky in places, like it's protecting something within. The amplifier seems more intelligent than most auto mechanicals. Any idea why? I can't, I can't go with any of those, but come on, there has to be more to it than that. Uh, Inspector, I'm sure you don't want to spend four hours talking back and forth about the intricacies of a science project. No. It works. That's the important part. Okay, the amplifier seems pretty powerful. Why are you trusting me with it? Well, everybody thinks I'm just like, greatest thing since Halcyon sliced bread. Because you're the inspector. I should think that's rather obvious. Yeah, but why not just use it yourself? I invented the discrepancy amplifier to assist me in my own medical work. When you were hired to investigate Helen's death, I realized I had my own part to play. I programmed the amplifier to assist you. I'm entrusting it to your care because I want to see my invention help a brilliant inspector solve the murder of the century. Okay. Um, and you want to be known as the inventor who helps solve Helen's murder. You don't miss a thing, do you, inspector? I can see why the constable recommended hiring you. <laughs> Think of the amplifier as my gift to you. May it avail you in the swift and efficient prosecution of justice. What happens if I break it or lose it or something? I still have the blueprint and several extra prototypes floating around, but I might recommend you try to be careful with it. Some of the amplifier's internal components are rare, shall we say, and I don't have an indefinite supply. Okay, back to my other question. You sure you don't want to know anything else? Oh, all right. We can change the subject. Sorry, lady, I ran out of questions. So I'd like to know a little more about you. Oh, why I'm flattered, Inspector. Let me think. I've worked at the Grand Colonial for about as long as it's been around. Prior to that, I lived in Byzantium, but I always felt like it was missing something. And that something turned out to be corpses. Byzantium has much in the way of luxury, but examining the dead does not rank amongst the preferred activities of the elite. I'm sorry, did she just say it didn't have enough corpses? You know, if you go to like the creepy basement <laughs> called Early Retirement, you'll find plenty of corpses there, I'm just pointing it out. Sounds like you enjoy being a coroner. Many people seem to think highly of Byzantium. Yeah, let's go with that one. It's not necessarily that I dislike it, just that I think the day in, day out flow of luxury gets old. Leisure is worth its salt, of course, but sometimes you need to get a little corpse blood on your hands to remember why life's worth living. You're kind of crazy. Or you really enjoy being a coroner. Absolutely. Usually, I'm just a medical practitioner, so I almost never get to deal with anything as unique or as quiet as a corpse. The most interesting thing I saw prior to this was the back of Mr. Woolrich's throat after he blew out his vocal cords, shouting at an attendant. If I weren't here, I'd be back in my quarters, rewatching Byzantium in the spring or working on my automatic sprat peeler. A automatic sprat peeler. Speaking of inventions, I'm curious about the discrepancy amplifier. I feel like we've already asked all those, but let's just double check. Oh, good. One of my favorite subjects. Ask away, my dear. Ask away. Okay, other questions. You sure you don't want to know anything else? I guess that's it. Any other clues that I can find? I feel like there should be more. Where does this go? I'm totally digging the elevator music. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so calm and quiet. Can I can I take Spectrum Brown? I just feel like that name is just very unappealing. I don't know why. Let's see. Uh, extra charm, extra base health, minus mine attributes, dexterity, brown vodka of Willie's plus one mine attributes. It's all over the place. It's, if it's brown, drink it down. You'll be happy that you did. Oh, oh. Okay, there's a pitch for you. But I got a new quest. Prince of Tossball, you discovered that Black Hole Birdie may have wanted to kill Halcyon Helen. Investigate what he was doing at the time of the murder. Gain access to VIP guest floor. Exploration, scanning for evidence, 
discrepancy amplifier. Okay. Transition to Eridanos. Okay. All right, now I'm finally indoors. We've got three floors. I'm guessing that was the basement area or it could be hotel rooms. Hmm. I kind of want to check out my, my suite though. What was the latest update on the initial main quest? Oh, I've I finished the last roll of Halcyon Helen. Using the discrepancy amplifier, you discovered your first lead of the murder investigation. Helen had recently visited the Purpleberry Orchards. And my new quest, a momentary taste of purpleberry re residue you found on the bottom of Halcyon Helen's shoes, indicates she visited Rizzo's Purpleberry Orchards a short time before her death. Perhaps she left a clue there concerning her murder. So following Helen's murder, Administrator Ludovico and Cedric Kincannon agreed to lock down the spaceport and bridge access to all land complexes. You need to check into the penthouse suite and contact Ludovico through the video terminal to unlock the bridge to Rizzo's Purpleberry Orchards. Okay. Well, I have to go visit my suite now. I knew I should have gotten her autograph when I had the chance. You'd think these people have never seen a corpse before. But Ellie, in their defense, they probably haven't seen a corpse before. Employees only. Okay. Concierge. It's not stealing. <laughs> they want me to have it. Concierge Terminal, welcome to the Grand Colonial Concierge Terminal. Please do not store any insufficiently encrypted gossip on the Grand Colonial Concierge Terminal. Oh, dang. Access rejected or restricted messages. Oh, I got to come back here with the vicar. So guest complaints from annoyed subject this infernal racket. Do you like torturing me? Is that what this is? When I first learned I'd be just beneath the floor occupied by the Rizzo's Rangers, I was excited as any tossball loving Halcyonite should be. What I did not anticipate is the degree to which these hull heads seemed to enjoy prancing to and fro, pounding on the floor and, see and my ceiling every hour of the architect cursed day. Did they install a tossball fifth court upstairs while I wasn't looking or is this normal? And worst of all, it sounds like one of them has decided to start imitating a woolly cow <laughs> i'll give them that it's a convincing facsimile but it has no place in a hotel all caps and each bleed is so loud it shakes the glasses on my face i demand a room change i demanded a room change yesterday for each additional hour after midnight today that i am not rehomed i expect at least one employee to be fired i mean seriously dude i doubt it's gonna happen they're probably making way more money off of this off the Rizzo's Rangers than they are you. But anyway, to the concierge from a concerned Byzantine subject, a mechanical menace to whatever member of the help it may concern. I've heard a horrible clanking passing by my room every night for the past six nights. Yesterday, I mustered up all my courage and sent a servant to look and upon her return, she said she'd seen what looked like an armed mechanical wandering by my room for the past six nights. She said it was something called the Burbage 3001 and that it was a serial star. I remember this from Byzantium when we did like the little like Hollywood bit there was a robots like Burbage 3001 and Burbage another version of Burbage I remember this very vaguely but anyway if this machine is a serial star I must ask why are you filming outside our rooms without paying us we're not consenting to have our temporary property filmed this is no doubt a contract there is no doubt a contract for this and if the machine is being allowed to wander without being filmed then i want to be paid double do you have any idea how dangerous that thing could be it could tread on my foot and ruin my aspirations to be a professional dancer if i ever decide to have these aspirations <laughs> i urgently await a response vip guest list ruth bellamy aka halcyon helen spencer woolrick black hole birdie hulka Requests manifest for Halcyon Helen. Despite her celebrity status, the greater part of Halcyon Helen's requests have been fairly normal. Soap, shampoo, new towels, and so on. The one exception is her unusual consumption of food and drink. I'm not one to judge about that sort of thing. Law knows I've seen stranger proclivities from other guests, but she really does request a lot and frequently. 
Listen to this. For lunch today, she ordered six Borson bean sandwiches, two purpleberry shakes, two purpleberry liqueurs, several retro rockets, and cigarettes enough to crush a tea teacup canid. I'd wonder if she's planning a party, but the cleaning staff say that every time they've gone up there, there's been no signs of what she's ordered. If Helen really does keep managing to get through all of what she's been ordering, then maybe she should consider quitting the show business and entering the com competitive consumption scene instead. That is odd. So Spencer Woolrick, in the past two weeks, I've received 315 different service requests from Mr. Woolrick. These requests include, but are not limited to, his entire wardrobe from Terran Monarch, 413 different outfits, including a primal suit, five gallons of each color of spectrum, each except black, wants 50 gallons of black, teacup canids of various breeds, a plasma launcher, Interesting, wasn't Halcyon Helen? Didn't she have plasma? Uh, was it plasma burns on her body or something? And consisting of over 60% of all the total requests, an upgraded room. Administrator Ludovico authorized him to move into the second largest room just to shut him, him the hell up. But Halcyon Helen got the biggest one. And of course, Walrick can't accept that he's been eclipsed. Get another, got another room upgrade request as I was typing this. I'm more than half a mind to send an exterminator to fumigate his room just so he can't request anything else for a while. But then he might come down here and try to talk to me. And I think I'd quite honestly rather be dead. <laughs> so this is the request for Black Hole Birdie. So Holcomb's requests have been about what you expect from a professional skull cracker, toss balls, toss ball sticks, new clothes, because he keeps, and I quote, accidentally tearing the shirts that are too small for my giant muscles. Wow. Funny how the rips I've seen look more like they've been made by hand. I noticed that he's asked for very little in the way of effort accelerators or enhancers. No skin tough, no oxycomp, and not any, not even any dervish mist. Typically, Tossville players go through that filth like no one else. Maybe Holcomb's trying to prove something to Helen. Whatever it is, I don't think it's going to work. I gotta come back. This is the access restricted messages. No doubt that will be very informative. Okay. So this is to the garden. And... Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Oh, really? Let's look around first. What is this? Severed head of Burbage 2000. Oh, that's the other uh, version of him. The head of Burbage 2000 torn from its body in the penultimate act of Titus Andronicus. Why, foolish Burbage, dost thou not perceive that Halcyon is but a wilderness of dissidents? And it is only through our citizens' vigilance that they will be caught, report, any and all suspicious behavior to your local constable. I read that poorly as usual. Rizzo's Rangers Tosser's Uniform. Ah, here we go. Analysis. An industrial grade laxative has been added to the liquor in these bottles. Hmm. So was Helen taking laxatives? Dissident Queen Chapter 2. Halcyon Helen encounters the Slugmen, having fought their way past the numerous bandits, ambushes, and hostile auto-mechanicals. Halcyon Helen and Olympias Opal had fought themselves at the gates of the had found themselves, rather, at the gates of the dissident hideout. You're a fine partner, easily better than my last, said Hel Helen. But I dare say these fiends outrank your typical anti-establishment scum. Many of them were scientists before they deserted their corporations, whereupon they stole technology for their own nefarious purposes. I've seen their abominations, and they're more than a typical person can handle. You should return to your job and to the place where you're needed." Though I know my work was valuable, Opal said, I am, I am still pleased that I was promoted to assist you 
to assist in your quest to rid the galaxy of those who would threaten the colony's productivity. The two of us together will, I believe, be twice as effective in eliminating the enemies of the board. Helen did not respond, but instead bid her companion be silent, for she had seen that the gates to the dissident hideout were no longer shut. Someone or something had opened them. So is this Olympus Opal, an actual person that like participated in things? Whoa, camera is all over the place. Check-in terminal, acquire penthouse key, acquire VIP floor access. I feel like I'm gonna get all of that by just talking to this lady. So let's try and do it properly. Hi, concierge Halston. The Grand Colonial Front Desk warmly welcomes you, Inspector. It's a pleasure to see you again. How may I be of assistance to you, Inspector? Well, I, I would like my my room, please. So I wanted to check to see if my room was ready yet. Mm, let's try that one first. Ah, yes. We are most pleased to offer you our grandest of grand accommodations, Inspector. The penthouse suite on our topmost floor is now available for you. The last guest left her belongings behind when she vacated unexpectedly, so we needed a little time to tidy the suite up for you. Simply call the elevator in the lobby and our highly skilled operator will deliver you to your private floor with efficiency and cheer. So yeah, it was Helen's room that I'm staying in. That's kind of creepy as well. But I need access to the VIP guest floor. I'd love to, Inspector, but I don't really have the authority. Moreover, the guests were promised exclusivity. If I let you up there, I'll never hear the end of it. Hmm. Bribe... Persuade the only guest who'd have a problem with me being up there would be the murderer. Ooh, let's try that. Hmm, that's a good point. If they give me guff, I can just tell them that they're obstructing justice. That has a nice ring to it. It does. Let me just set you up with VIP guest floor access. Done. You can now come and go as you please. So the Grand Colonial sure is interesting. It certainly is a marvel of modern ingenuity, luxury, and ambition. Please, allow me to answer any curiosities you might have about our building and the amenities on offer. Oh, of course. Well, what does the penthouse have to offer? Twice the size of the next biggest room, and kit it out with any amenity you want, as well as many that you won't. Best to enjoy it while you can, Inspector. Typically, the only people who can afford the penthouse suite have enough bits to suffocate everyone on Terra 2. Also, please inform me if Woolridge gives you a hard time about getting a better room than his. Don't tell him I said this, but everyone on staff wants to strangle him. So I hear. <laughs> Is there anything special about the upper levels? Most certainly. All the important folks can be found in the utmost parts of the hotel. You can hardly walk three feet without bumping into a tossball great or a board exec. Though maybe don't bump into them. It could be <laughs> harmful to your health. Probably. So no one seems to talk much about the lower levels of the hotel. Who would be interested in a staff-only area? I would. Most folks never ask about the sewers beneath Arizo's plant, either. You can't honestly tell me there's nothing of interest in an entire half of the hotel. Of interest to your investigation? Well, I suppose there is that one door we're not supposed to open. But I'm sorry, Inspector, I'm not authorized to grant you access to any staff sections of the hotel. You'll have to find a way in on your own. Okay. If you're sure. That one door that they can't open, that seems oddly suspicious. But anyway, you've got some high-profile guests here, right? What can you tell me about them? My apologies, Inspector, but that would be a severe violation of guest privacy. We here at the Grand Colonial firmly believe that... All right, my supervisor just walked out of earshot. Some folks just don't understand the importance of gossip. About whom? And what would you wish to know? Concierge Holston, you may be my favorite person on this kind of planet. <laughs> but did you notice anything about Halcyon Helen before she died? You know, out of everyone here, I probably knew the least about Helen. I'm not much of an Aether Wave watcher myself. And Helen always had a crowd of admirers chasing her, you see? So she rarely stopped to chat. Friendly enough, surely, but always seemed untouchable. Emphasis on seemed. Did you ever see Helen acting strangely? Hmm. Now that you mention it, 
She was usually calm and collected, but every so often I'd see her looking all wild-eyed and intense. Mm. It seemed as if she was determined about something. Or maybe she was just hungry. That woman ordered a lot of food. Maybe show business gives you a faster metabolism. Not really. That's not really how that works. Um, hang on, let me try to get you back. You know, I'm... Was she closer with some people... Was she, was she closer with some people than others? That's not very well written. Everyone wanted to be around Helen. She could usually be seen alongside Bertie or Woolrich for obvious reasons. Heard Black Hole Bertie was staying here. Ah, uh, Bertie. Is he bigger than he is dumb or dumber than he is big? <laughs> I have a bet with a friend. Not sure we'll ever get it to pay out. Bertie used to be Helen's beau, though he isn't anymore and not just because she's dead. If I had a million bits, I'd spend everyone just to learn what caused their split. That's what you would spend it on? Okay, lady, it's your money. So Helen's co-star, Woolrig, he have any reasons to want her dead? If looks could kill, he'd have put her in the ground ten times over. Man's clearly jealous of her success compared to his. See, I'd bet we're the only two people thinking about him in all of Eridanos. And I only am because you mentioned his name. <laughs> If you leave woolly cow milk out, it turns to curds. Leave the curds out, they begin to get stale, then rot. Woolridge is on his way to the trash bin, and everyone knows it. Either he's in denial, or he knew Helen would be checking out soon, judging by his increasing demands for a room upgrade. Interesting. That's a shame, Inspector. What if I wanted to know a little about you? Oh, that's fine. I'm a freelance captain changing the colony one high stakes encounter at a time. I like to let my reputation speak for itself. A fewer, the fewer people who know about me, the better. I'd say too bad. Now let's go with the first one. A dashing gunslinger type then. Exactly. I'm sure the investigation will turn out splendidly in your hands. Or at least Mr. Kincannon seems confident enough to believe so. Well, one would certainly hope. So bye. We're going to talk to you again, Concierge Halston. Okay, laggy game going on what is this now join us for the profit of a profitability seminar a flyer promoting a productive therapy seminar was with renowned profit of profitability jasmine leva at her retreat in the wilderness exploration reserve under her patented system purge your body of nefarious humor stopping you from unlocking your true product productivity potential like that's a scam waiting to happen. Okay, there's an upstairs here, but I really, really, really want to go see my penthouse. So we'll have to come back down here. I did here. not read about this kind of treatment in the service agreement papers. I mean, the lounge is apparently closed, lady. It's not going to happen. Ooh, the pool? And refreshments? Ah, vending machines. Okay. Like, now I've discovered all of them. Grand ballroom. Ooh. Who was talking? Black Hole Bertie hasn't been seen since Helen's death. Awfully suspicious, right? Actually, a lot of people seem to be missing lately. But I see your point about him specifically. Who else is missing? I see the adjutant sent her own freelancer to mourn Helen's death. Ooh, Bellhop Norville. Let's talk to him again. Finally checked in, I see. I hope you're fond of the penthouse. It's pretty much the best seat in the whole hotel. You shouldn't want for any amenity you might find elsewhere. Should act as a better headquarters for the investigation than any space dust covered ship. Hey. That and you ain't got room service on a ship. Fair point. You ever need anything, come find me. Even if you don't, you can still swing by. I'm always happy to chat. Okay. Did you know the victim? Oh, of course. That is, uh, maybe not on a personal level, but... I'm one of her biggest fans, even started an association of like-minded individuals. I'd lament not having anything to meet about anymore, but the newer tribe just ain't done it for us. Still, there goes my hopes of a Terra on Monarch reunion episode. He really is a big fan. There are other celebrities, right? Sorry, friend, but I guess you don't get it. Helen was special, had a certain quality about her, like she would really go out and fight injustice. You look at Woolrich, and no disrespect to the man, but you just don't get the same feeling. 
Yeah. He reminds me more of a vacuum suit without nobody in it. <laughs> uh, don't tell him I said that. <laughs> okay. Now, what can I lend a hand with? Oh, lots of things. From what I've heard, your affection for Helen was somewhat extreme. I haven't heard that. I'm curious about you. How did you get to be a bellhop? Notice my battle-hardened physique, have you? Used to be in a mighty mean line of work. Been shot at 35 times. That is, um, I've been near people who were shot at 35 times. What were you- But to be honest, I never really enjoyed it, you know? It's one thing to tightrope walk between life and death every day, but for just a handful of bits? Nah. When this position came up, I jumped on it and made a lateral move from sublight to slug. I ain't ever looked back. Oh. I... He worked at sublight salvage, maybe, and now he works at slug, which is still part of sublight? I'm confused. So I thought slug and sublight didn't engage much. How did you move from one to the other? Got any good stories? Sure, you've seen a lot of uh, people coming and going. How different is working with Slug from working with Sublight? Yeah, let's go with the first one. Hmm, well, Slug is something like an offshoot of Sublight. It ain't too difficult to pivot from one part of the same company to another. Disconnects or no. Hmm. That said, my departure may have been somewhat hasty. Why? Did something bad? and had to make some tracks, A, I know the feeling. Let's try that. I mean, yes, but I still earned Sublight a hell of a lot of bits. Basically, I singled out a ship to salvage that I thought had been out for use for years. As it turns out, it belonged to a wealthy Byzantine who used it only to vacation. <laughs> As it so happened, I still don't think she tried to use it, too satisfied with the luxuries of Byzantium. Still, I figured it was a good time to turn tail in case that ever changed. Hmm, got any good stories? Let's try that one. Stories, huh. Actually, I think I got a couple now that you mention it. There used to be a whole toss belt court on one of the planetoids, but they ripped it out. Bench clears are a tad too lethal when there's an endless drop on every side. <laughs> How different is working with slug from working with sublight? Well, Slug is more trustworthy for one thing, where Sublight is all about back alleys and backstabbing. Slug can be trusted not to salvage your ship when you turn your head. Okay. And then mind if I ask you a few questions about the crime scene? Please do. You want to give me details on how you came across the body? Sure, I'd take into checking the barroom every few hours prior to the unveiling. Just to make sure no sprats had snuck into the place. You understand? Yeah. Found her right before I was set to head back to my room in the lower levels for my mandated five-hour sleep period. Tell ya, thank the law for caffeinoid. Been too upset to get a wink of sleep since. And hey, now I can finally see smells. Did you kill Helen? You can tell me if you did, it'll be our secret. Any idea why Helen would have been in the ballroom after hours? Let's go with that one instead. Beats all hell out of me. Maybe she was, uh, practicing for the unveiling? Now we'll go with ask if he killed her. What? No. <laughs> Just because I found the corpse doesn't mean I made her a corpse. <laughs> I wasn't shift all day. Besides, I loved Helen cereals. Well, the old ones anyway. The newer episodes are hot junk on a warm day. Oh, really? Sure. What's on your mind? Did you see Helen on the day of her death? Of course I did. I just told you I found the body. Oh, wait. Uh, you mean when she was still breathing? Yeah. Um, uh, no, no, of course I didn't. Plus, it's untoward for an employee to speculate about the actions of a hotel guest. Not that I saw any hotel guests interacting with her. Uh, okay, I think we both know that you're itching to gossip. Honestly, you're more than a little right. <laughs> I've been burning at the bridges to share my theories. Day of her death, I saw Helen leave the hotel premises of the profit of profitability. And didn't see her come back. A little on the suspicious side, I think. Mm -hmm. Seemed especially strange seeing how, as far as I was aware, the two didn't get on. Oh, really? What's the deal with the profit of profitability? She a guest? Uh, yep. 
gives seminars on increasing profit margins and the like. Can't say much else, seeing how I ain't in the gossip market. <laughs> Why didn't Helen and the Prophet get along? As far as I can recall, Helen dismissed the lady's seminars in some kind of interview. Said her co-star used them, but she didn't. The top rungers are always ready to read between the lines of famous folks and seem to think the Prophet was on her way out. Woman lost a ton of bits and is set to lose more. Oh. Back to my other questions. I hope all that helped. I'd like to be as useful as I can in the investigation. I just didn't want to steer anyone the wrong way. Got any idea who might have wanted to do Helen in? Everyone's got theories. I don't reckon mine hold much more weight than anyone else's. But I want to hear it. Oh. Well, how ironic. We ended our last video talking to Bellhop Norval, and we're going to end today's video also talking to Bellhop Norval because I'm definitely a time. So I think on Tuesday, we will head up to my penthouse because I'm very excited to see what that looks like. Finish exploring the hotel. I've got a new quest I need to go over and then we'll go from there like always. So as always, thank you so very much for watching. Please do keep yourselves safe and I will see you again on Tuesday with another new Outer Worlds video.